Hello everybody, how are you doing? I am Chitanshu from Dream Abroad and today in this video I'll tell you few tips and tricks that can be used to score CLB9. Yes, the magical score in IELTS. So if you want to know those tips and tricks, stay tuned. Okay, so let's begin this video. So some of you might not be sure what is CLB9 for IELTS and what does it mean and why is it so important. So let me tell you that CLB9, CLB means uh, Canadian Language Benchmark and CLB9 basically means a score of uh, 7778 in IELTS. Now 777 means uh, speaking, writing and reading and 8 means 8 bands in listening test. Now it is so important because if you score CLB 8, then your score would be very less. If you score CLB 9, your score would suddenly jam jump and uh, you would score really good in uh, the express entry pool. Okay, now let's start with the tips. Okay, so first of all, I would suggest you to be reasonably confident. Uh, by that I mean, don't be underconfident and don't be overconfident. I've got two friends. One of them was overconfident that he scored really good in TOEFL and uh, he studied from DU, he was very good in English so he would score good in uh, IELTS pretty easily. He booked the test when he was not even prepared, he didn't even give the mock test for it and he straight away went for it. He scored good but uh, his score was uh, 6 or 6.5 in uh, one of the um, sections. So he appeared again and again similar thing happened, his score was stuck at 6.5 and finally he is still in India. Uh, he couldn't come because he gave up on his uh, you know, plan of giving the exam again and then coming over here. Another friend was really underconfident uh, that his English was not all good. He appeared for IELTS twice and uh, then he also gave up because uh, he was not all confident that he would clear uh, IELTS with CLB 9. So this is very important that you should have enough confidence. Not, don't be underconfident and don't be overconfident. Okay, also I would suggest to you that uh, you should actually practice a few mock tests and then go for the tests. Because you should know your depth. You should realize that where do you actually stand. It might be a case that uh, you go for the test and you score, you know, 8888 or maybe 9999 in all the sections. Someone might be that good uh, without even practicing. But most of us would be like, you know, you need to practice before uh, going for the test. So I would suggest go for some mock tests. There are plenty of websites available which would provide you uh, mock tests for free of cost. So go for a mock test and then evaluate yourself how much do you actually uh, score in uh, each of the sections? If you think you can score really good, then it's totally fine. Uh, you can uh, you know, book the test for from, from 15 days, just practice a little bit and then go for the test. But if you feel that you need more practice, then wait for uh, some wait for a time when you start scoring good and then take 15 days or two or three weeks time and then appear for the test. You won't find much material to practice for CELPIP, but uh, for IELTS you'd find a lot of material which is uh, available free of cost over the internet, so you can definitely use it. Should you go for training, should you go for paid classes, I would suggest to you that there's plenty of material available online. You can go to YouTube, uh, there are plenty of videos, great channels providing great content, great advices, great tips on each section, how to handle a uh, particular type of questions, you'll find it. I'll provide the you know, the list of those channels down here so that you can actually uh, find them and uh, use those videos for improving your English and to score good in IELTS. Okay, coming over to tips for individual sections. So I will tell you the tips that I used uh, for myself. I'm not an IELTS trainer. I don't also believe that my English is that great that I could advise you, but I would give you some tips which you can definitely use, which I use for my benefit. So, okay, so let's start with the writing section. So I would suggest you go to Google and type band nine essays. Now you'd find some essays, some letters, Obviously, uh, you should know that uh, you have to write one letter over there and one essay. So you'd find some essays and some letters in, uh, you know, on Google, which are like damn good. You would read them and you would be like, wow. So I would suggest don't read the content straight away. 
first of all check out the letter or the essay the topic of the letter of the essay and write your own letter and essay after that compare them with that with you what you found on the internet which says band 9 what when i did this exercise i was like uh, what have i written like uh, it's no way compared to what people actually write it's totally fine uh, we do work in corporate world so many of uh, you i'm sure actually work in corporate and we do have this uh, that habit of writing so many emails and that reflects in our writing as, as well uh, as well sometimes so uh, it happened with me but yes with practice i actually uh, you know overcome that factor so this was a uh, one tip now it is very important that how you can actually uh, judge yourself uh, how you can judge your own writing so this was one way of doing it uh, the second way is that you can uh, come you can find a partner uh, for checking your uh, letter or essay so how you can do that you can come over to uh, the dream abroad let's crush isles facebook group you'll find many people over there just group uh, just make a group and uh, definitely uh, find a partner over there who can you know check your letter and essay your writing skills and uh, you can do the same with him or her so in this way you'll definitely benefit of, of course we can't find uh, you know mistakes in what we do but others do it very easily so it would be very easy for both of you guys uh, okay another very important point is uh, time management so i appeared for ielts twice uh, first time i remember doing a mistake that uh, i was i invested so much time in uh, the letter section so you ideally given uh, 20 minutes you should ideally spend 20 minutes in uh, writing the letter and 40 minutes in writing the essay because of course essay has more marks but i did something different in the first time what i did was i tried to write letter in such a good way and ended up spending 30 minutes then i realized that you know 30 minutes are already gone i just wrapped it up and then i started with the essay and of course i had less time to uh, do the essay so uh, i would suggest to you the second time what i did was uh, write the essay first of all and then go on to write the letter so in this way you even if you get like uh, you know 18 15 18 minutes then uh, even you will be able to write the letter uh, you know in a shorter span of time uh, so this way it would be very helpful for you guys okay now coming over to the speaking section of course you have got a separate day for speaking uh, the interview which you can say is uh, like uh, 14 to 15 minutes like maybe even 10 minutes to 15 minutes time so what you have to do over there is uh, you have to i mean they will ask you general questions just to test your english so don't worry go there dress well because first impression is last impression just think of it as a normal interview don't panic be confident and greet the examiner as soon as you go there this will create a great impression and after that just answer the question uh, whichever question they ask mind it it's not a fact check so even if you some tell something which is factually incorrect as far as your english is great it's totally fine they're not going to check uh, the facts let's say uh, they ask which was the last place that you actually went and uh, i mean how was your holiday so you can say i went to uh, barcelona and uh, the beaches were there the beaches over there were really fabulous um, i mean it's it's like lying but it does not matter whatever you say so uh, you can make it up like this was just one example you could definitely make up your sentences you can definitely make up your thoughts what you have to say uh, to them please make sure don't make any uh, you know pronunciation mistakes make sure your volume is not too high not too low please make sure uh, the mother tongue influence you know many people coming from different uh, places of india uh, i'm talking about india because i have seen more people from there so many people like punjabis they do have some punjabi tone in uh, in their english south indians they do have some south indian tone maybe i'm from up so many people uh, from up do have some different kind of a uh, you know uh, influence on english this is called mother tongue influence mti so please make sure that uh, you know this actually does not happen uh, because it does not because of course it does not uh, you know reflects that uh, you are great in english okay one tip which many people actually use is uh, learning some words so you can maybe list down 8 10 words and uh, you can use them you know in some in, in few sentences 
So what, how you can actually divide it, let's say um, just you have to talk about a person. So let's say uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So you can say his image is, you know, uh, he's an honest guy, he's a hardworking guy, he's a humble guy, um, he is, uh, you know, charismatic. No words like these, uh, he's, uh, he's really enthusiastic, he's really influential. So all these kinds of adjectives can be used to describe a person now. It, it, it can be any person, like uh, if they ask you about your relative, about your girlfriend, your boyfriend, uh, your friend, uh, your teacher, um, an idol, an actor, a sports person, anyone, anyone. So you can use these words actually to describe that person. So in this way, your vocabulary would be checked and you definitely get some good points for your vocabulary. Okay, so let's say you're asked about a place uh, which was your favorite destination or uh, which is your dream destination about your last holiday. So, uh, you know, you can include things like uh, the weather over there. You can include things uh, like the people over there, the culture, the uh, food that is being served over there, uh, the, the currency over there. Uh, you can talk about the government. You can talk about, you know, a dozen things. So make up those minds. Uh, have that thought in your mind that what you have to speak if you're asked such a question maybe about an event then you can say uh, when that event was uh, held how that event was held uh, what was the main reason what was the celebrations which were there how was the weather there uh, what were the what was the decorations uh, how was the decorations over there uh, what was was there any dress code for that event how was the music over there so it's important to have that thought in your mind originally that what you have to speak over there. So the most important thing to do is practice and how you can actually practice speaking. There's a very famous app named as Cambly. You can use this app to your advantage. You'd find tutors from uh, around the world, from UK, from US, from Canada over there. They're trained specialists of English. Uh, you actually go to that app and straight away you can talk to those people uh, they'll train you for IELTS. You can talk to them. You can tell them your mistakes. You can tell them how you want to improve. You know your mistakes like I know that I fumble at times. So you can tell them that I fumble at times. If you don't know your mistakes, you can talk to them for 10-15 minutes. They will tell you your mistakes. What are the mistakes that you actually make? And of course, then you can correct those mistakes. They'll also guide you to correct those mistakes. They'll tell you what are the tips to improve your speaking habits and also their native English speakers so you'll not only get the benefit in speaking but also in the listening section because all the voices the audio which you hear in the listening section is actually the native English speakers if you so Cambly can definitely help you in improving your speaking and listening capabilities for sure and if you're watching this video you've got a benefit dream abroad subscribers will actually get 30% discount on uh, the prices of Cambly. So, okay, now coming over to the listening section. Now, listening section is uh, really crucial uh, because uh, it is the only section where you have to score eight bands. It is fairly easy. That is the reason why you have to uh, you have asked to score more. And of course, it is so crucial because the sentence is not repeated again. If you miss a question, it's missed. And here comes a very important tip. If you miss a question, uh, if you miss an answer actually, then don't go back and keep thinking about it because you'll actually miss the questions, uh, the answers, which are you know just coming in 10 seconds or five seconds from then. So if you have missed a question, forget about it, move ahead, look for the future. It's very important to stay calm and focused in the listening test because you cannot afford to get distracted. If you get distracted for even 10 seconds, you might miss a question or two. Uh, the, of course, the audio won't be repeated again, so you definitely would miss that question. Now the test is actually for 40 minutes. First 30 minutes are for the audio and then you get 10 minutes to transfer your answers from the question paper to the answer sheet. And before every section, you're given some time to look at the questions. That time is very crucial. Time is so crucial uh, when it comes to listening section. So you have to read those questions in that time frame. So you'd be uh, told that uh, read questions from 20 to 25, uh, that would be coming next. So use that time 
to actually memorize those questions so that when uh, those actually those words those keywords actually come up you can answer it very easily without a problem okay so coming over to the reading section i would suggest that don't spend too much time on one question uh, for example if you not getting the answer for one question move on to the next question don't spend too much time don't waste your time again scan the keywords it is so important to underline those words so that whenever you find those uh, words in your questions then it would be very easy for you now basically there are three techniques some people actually uh, read the questions first of all and then they read the passages some people read the passages first and then they read the uh, questions and some people actually uh, just point out those those keywords in questions and point out those keywords in the passages and then try to answer none of these patterns is totally correct and none is uh, totally wrong why because it depends from person to person uh, i might like to read the questions first of all you might like to read the uh, passage first of all so but you should be prepared in your mind what is your strategy making strategy before the test is so important so have your strategy in your mock tests try both of the techniques rather the three techniques uh, whichever works for you which uh, through which you feel that you score the maximum marks go for it use the same technique in the test as well don't try and experiment in the test that uh, you read the questions in the mock test and then you go on to read uh, the uh, passage first in the original test that will not work and those questions which i found most tricky were true false and not given i got really confused at some times it sounds very simple but when you actually start doing it then it gets really complicated at times so um, practice those questions a lot because they are really really confusing okay so the last tip is again about time management and this time in uh, the reading section so there are three different uh, sections in uh, the reading test and uh, the first section is the easiest one the second is the tougher and the first one third one is the toughest so what approach i followed is that i approached the toughest first of all and because you have to spend maximum time over there i would suggest you to spend like uh, 25 minutes in the uh, toughest section 20 minutes in the second section and then 20 uh, 15 minutes in the first section i mean this is there's no foundation but if you use it this way then it will be uh, pretty easy for you so i did reverse order you can do it in your own way but spend you know divide the complete sections in time like this like 15 20 and 25 this will definitely help you one very important tip towards the last is don't give up i have seen people who have appeared for ielts more than 10 times they didn't give up and they are in canada now so uh, if it is your dream don't give up giving up is not even an option i know it is very frustrating i know it is a uh, very expensive to appear for the test again and again some people say it's a scam whatever it is if you cannot do anything about it just at least prepare for it and do your best don't give up thanks again for watching this video if you like this video please click the like button and share it with your friends if you think it would be helpful for them and yes If you haven't subscribed my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Go and subscribe it before moving on to the next video. Thanks again.